Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about analytics and specifically which analytics you need to be paying attention to as a beginner here on YouTube. If you've ever clicked onto the analytics tab on your YouTube studio, you've probably been overwhelmed by the amount of data that you find there but I don't want you to be overwhelmed and I don't want you to be wasting so much time trying to figure out which metrics that you need to look at. So we're gonna go over step-by-step step exactly what metrics you need to measure week by week, month by month. Now, if you wanna learn more about YouTube and how to create a lead generation machine using YouTube, make sure to click the link below to save your seat for my free masterclass. So who am I? Well, my name is Melissa Mitchell and I am the owner of Wanderman Creative and the creator of the Video Lead Machine Method, which is my signature method you'll learn in the masterclass below. So enough about me, let's get into this video. Now, before I get started, I do want to mention that these metrics are not ordered in the order of importance by any means. So take that with a grain of salt. These are all important metrics. Also, these are metrics that I look at on a monthly basis at minimum. There are some of these metrics as we go through them that I will mention that you might want to look at at a video basis. So however often you decide you want to post videos, whether that's once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever you decide, you'll want to be watching some of these metrics on a per video basis. So if that's once a week, you want to be going back and looking at some of them once a week. Okay, so the first one is watch time. And this is probably one of the most important metrics on YouTube. I like to say that watch time equals wealth on YouTube. Why? Because it's one of the most important metrics that YouTube actually looks at when it comes to your channel. If you have high watch time and high audience retention, which we're going to talk about next, YouTube will actually push you up higher in their search algorithm. Now, watch time is just as it sounds. It's the amount of time people watch your video for. So you wanna look at this metric in two different ways. The first time is your watch time as a channel whole. So how many hours have people been watching videos on your channel in total? And then you also wanna be looking at the watch time on a per video basis, because this is going to show you which of your videos are performing the best which of your videos are captivating people the most. For example, if you have an eight minute video and people are only watching two minutes of it versus you have another 10 minute video and people are watching eight minutes of that 10 minute video, you know that that second one, that one where they're watching eight minutes is doing better than the other one. And then you can start to put your scientist's code on and you can really start to analyze why that video is doing better than the other one. Was it because of your title? Was it because of the information itself? Was it because of how you presented the material, right? You're gonna wanna put your scientist's code on and really understand the difference. But if you don't know that data, it's gonna be very hard for you to understand and make any changes, okay? So that's the first metric is your watch time on a channel basis and per video basis, okay? The second one is audience retention. And audience retention and watch time really go hand in hand, okay? So I'm gonna explain them to you. Audience retention basically means how long someone is staying on your video for. So it kind of goes back to that first example where I said, you know, if it's a 10 minute video and people have watched eight minutes of it, they've how long have they retained on that video, right? If they've watched eight minutes of a 10 minute video, they've watched 80%. So your attempt audience retention is 80% on that video. So this metric is something you're gonna wanna look at on a channel basis as well, and then a per video basis, just like you did with your watch time, okay? This metric is really gonna show you how engaging your video really is. How much of the video did people watch? If people are falling off, you know, 30 seconds into the video, you might wanna look at your video and say, okay, maybe my hook isn't very good. My introduction isn't doing enough to hook them into the video, or maybe if they're falling off right at a second point in your video, you can kind of look at that point and understand why are they falling off here? And maybe I didn't explain something right. Maybe the information isn't doing the title justice, right? All these different things. You can kind of look at that through your audience retention and understand where they're falling off on the video. Okay, the third metric is video views. And this one is pretty self-explanatory, right? It's how many people have viewed your video. And again, you're gonna wanna look at this metric as a channel as a whole. So how many views has your channel gotten in total and on a per video basis as well. So how many views has each video that you've posted gotten? This is another great metric to understand which videos are performing the best as well. Because if one video has you know, a thousand views and the other video has three views, 
again, you're gonna start to understand what people are searching for, and then you can double down on the titles and the things that people are really searching for that have higher views. Now, one thing I do want to mention here is that you're going to want to look at all of these metrics, not only individually, but also as a whole picture, right? For example, if one of your videos has 100 views, but your audience retention is only 20%, that means that your watch time on that video isn't going to be great either, right? Because there's only 20% of the video being watched of those 100 views, right? So your watch time isn't going to be as high as if 100 people view that video the whole way through, okay? So look at things as a whole picture before you just start comparing things because just because one video has lower views than another one, the audience retention and the watch time could be higher on the one with less views than the one with more views, okay? So don't look at things separately, kind of take the holistic approach and look at all of these metrics as a whole picture. Okay, the fourth one is subscribers. Now, this is a pretty basic one, but it's one that most people look at when they try to grow or it's where they deem their growth on YouTube. Now, the reason that I did them in quotation marks is because I don't want you to get caught up on the amount of subscribers you have. So many people think, well, I need 100,000 subscribers on YouTube to be successful. And that just isn't the case, okay? I don't want you to get caught up on this number because you can monetize YouTube with a very, very small subscriber base and you can make YouTube work for you with a very small subscriber base. I know a lot of YouTubers with hundreds of thousands of subscribers that don't have a strategy behind their channel and they're actually not making any money off of it. And that's not, that's not the goal, right? So don't get caught up on this number at all, okay? It is a good way to measure your channel and that's why it's included on this list. It's nice to see that you're growing over time and which videos are bringing you in new subscribers, but don't get caught up on this, this number so, so much. And especially when you're just beginning, that first 100 subscribers of your channel is going to feel really hard. It's gonna feel like you're growing it, like one subscriber every couple weeks or two subscribers, and it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, how can I not just get to 100 subscribers or 1,000 subscribers? But that's just YouTube. As a new channel, you're gonna have to just put in the work and you're gonna get one subscriber at a time and grow and grow and grow. But please do not give up before that and please do not put too much emphasis on this number, okay? That's a huge one I wanted to emphasize in this video. Okay, the fifth one. The fifth one is traffic sources. Now, personally, this is one of my favorite metrics to look at because it's going to show you exactly where you're getting your traffic to your videos from. It could be that people are coming from Instagram. It could be that people are coming from Facebook, from Pinterest from um, YouTube search, right? Or YouTube suggested videos. You're gonna see when you go into the back end of your YouTube studio into analytics under traffic sources, there's gonna be this long list of different places where people are coming from to see your videos. And this could be due to a lot of things, right? If you're posting your videos on Facebook or if you're posting up a, a post on Instagram and then directing people to go back to YouTube to watch, that could be the reason that you're getting uh, people back to your YouTube channel that way. But the reason that I love traffic sources so much is that I like to look at how many people or how much traffic is coming to my channel and to my, my videos from YouTube suggested and YouTube search. Why these two things? Well, because these two things are where the power of YouTube really comes into play. If these two numbers are high, this means that I've done my job correctly and that my keywords that I'm trying to rank for are doing well and that YouTube is actually suggesting my videos for these keywords. YouTube search means that people have searched something into the search bar of YouTube and my video has popped up, which is the goal, right? That's how you get that organic traffic and that's how you create that organic lead generation machine that works for you 24 hours. So if you have a YouTube channel already, I challenge you to go in and check this metric and comment below and let me know what is your highest traffic source. Okay, the last metric that I want you to look at is your click-through rate. This metric basically means how many people saw your video in search, right? They searched for something in the search bar, your video popped up, how many people saw your video, your thumbnail, and actually clicked on it and watched your video. That's your click-through rate. And this is a really important metric to look at as well because it's telling you how good your thumbnail is, how good your title is. Are people actually enticed to wanna click on it, right? Because when you're searching something in YouTube, you have a long list of videos to choose from, right? And you wanna make sure that you're getting the highest click-through rate possible, meaning that the highest amount of people 
are actually clicking over and actually watching your video, which is again, gonna increase your watch time, increase that um, views, right? It's gonna increase that audience retention. This is that beginning initial step that needs to be high at the beginning of the chain for the rest of the things to kind of fall down, right? So we wanna make sure our click-through rate is good and it's high. Another thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of times your YouTube thumbnail will have a lot to do with your click-through rate and your YouTube thumbnail is actually something that you can test on YouTube and change. So if you notice that your click-through rate is really low, you can actually go in, make edits to your YouTube thumbnail, and then try out a different thumbnail to see if that will increase your click-through rate. Now, if you wanna learn how to create a really great, amazing YouTube thumbnail, make sure to check out my other video on the channel on how to create YouTube thumbnails, and I'll make sure to link it in the YouTube cards above here for you. Okay, so now that you know the top six metrics that you need to look at as a beginner on YouTube, let me know in the comments below which one you're going to tackle first, which one you're gonna look at and make sure to improve first. Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you wanna learn how to create this monetization lead generation system for yourself using YouTube, make sure to save your seat by clicking on the link below to sign up for my free masterclass. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that like button and subscribe for more weekly videos and we'll catch you next week. Bye.